Hello and welcome to Some Dude Shed, the podcast in the in the shed in the sunniest part of Northern Ireland. And today we will be uh, we'll be telling each other stories, and we have to work out whether they are true or if they are false. That's, um, that's that's basically it. These are going to be stories from history, I guess. Yeah. If you've been um, following the podcast, you know the drill. You know the drill. Yeah. You know the drill. I'm on. Mr. Red. Mr. Black. Uh, that's Mr. Black. Uh, Mr. Gray. Yes. Um, so let's just get right into it. Let's get started. Mr. Red, I believe you're first. Yes. Uh, well, if you want to take a guess, my story takes place in... World War II? Yes. For fuck's sake. <laughs> so? Which means it's probably true. <laughs> well, that's a dangerous line of thinking there, Mr. Black. Well. I'll have to hear the story first. Uh, well, during the Second World War, um, uh, have you ever heard of SOE? No. Special Operations Executive. It was okay. the it was the prelude to MI5, MI6. All right. Sure. Okay. Uh, British Intelligence Service. Um. Anyway, during the Second World War, one of the uh, plans they uh, con- concocted for s- sabotage in uh, German occupied Europe to target factories was rat bombs. Rat bombs. Really? <laughs> We're doing exploding animals again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. So, how do these rat bombs work? Well, what they did was they got a thousand rats. <laughs> Sorry, no, there's only a hundred rats. There's a man with a flute. They got a hundred <laughs> dead rats and sewed some explosives into the rats. Uh, and what? They would sew them in? Yes. Did... So, they would get okay. dead rats, cut them open, sew explosives into the rats. Dead I, ones? I think they were already pre dead, yes. Right. Um, but anyway, the idea was they would give them to resistance operatives or local operatives or whatever, um, and they would leave them in factories near boilers, whether they're in factories or other places that had boilers. The, just the assumption would be, well, if a worker came along, found a dead rat in the ground, they would just pick up the rat with a shovel or something and just throw it straight into the boiler. Uh, the Obviously, the explosives would go off in the boiler at some point, and since it's and the boiler would cause a massive explosion and a lot of damage and slow down production. When you say the boiler, they're not tossing it into the water, they're tossing it into a fire, so like a furnace. Yes, right? a big a big furnace, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yes, you're right, the furnace. Right. Hmm. So say you're in a tank factory, you're just this German worker in a tank factory, and they have a furnace heating up, um, I don't know, molten metal to create a plate or something for the side of a tank. You're working, you're working away, and then you're going on your lunch, you're walking along, and you're like, oh, there's a dead rat in the ground. I've got to clean that up. Pick it up. Throw it in the furnace. Could be less than a minute later. Boom. And then you're having a massive explosion inside a tank factory. Huh. And how are they going to deliver these dead rats? Well, they would be dropped off to local resistance. Or they would have maybe their own operative. In Ooh, the you can't just say dropped off to local resistance. How are, they, how are they going to deliver the rats to the factories? Well, if you let me finish. Okay. Well, <laughs> They dropped them off to local resistance, and then they would either they would break into the factory, or maybe they even worked in the factory, and they would just drop the rat near the furnace, and it just looks like a dead rat. So they have to wander around with a rat in their pocket for a little while. But surely, if one rat blew up, they'd be like, "Well, let's stop uh, chucking these rats into the furnace." Was this something that was you said it was concocted? Was it ever implemented? No, they did. As I said, they did do it with a hundred rats, but they were caught. They were the shipment was. Uh, caught by the germ, so it never actually made it into uh, the hands of operatives that were used. And then after the sh- Germans caught that shipment, they they actually did conduct a search of all major factories and to find if there had been any rats left in near furnaces or anything vital. And um, yeah, they didn't find anything. So this is the first shipment, how, and they caught it. How big would and an explosion after, be from a rat? After. They caught it. SOE gave up on the, the plan because obviously they the Germans knew that. Well, obviously they're just going to tell their workers not to throw rats in the furnaces or and I think they could explode. But then it was implemented, but it just didn't work. Yes. Like they, they did it once, so yes. it was so the something plan, they did. The plan was dropped. Onto it. How much explosive could you fit into a rat? Imagine just about a stick of dynamite or something. Yeah, surely that would be like. Would you say the size of a grenade? Some similar. Most of a grenade is just the shell. Well, that's fragmentation. True. So imagine just like a small. That went off inside a furnace. It could be something the size of a grenade, but just explosive. Yeah. yeah. If that went off inside a furnace, it could cause enough damage to seriously well, the, halt production. The furnace itself will explode. Yeah. It's going to build up all the pressure and all the heat in it, and the furnace is just going to go bang. Yeah. And then that's going to cause a massive amount of damage on its own, and it'll destroy like power it's producing or whatever it's being used to melt. So As I said, a tank factory, it's going to halt production in a tank factory for a while. Yeah. Where did they uh, test this? 
Any specific know. factory or? No, I'm sure they didn't actually get it. But you said they. Yeah, they shipped. Uh, they had a hundred of them and they shipped them. What the Germans called them. Uh, okay, right. So it it was, it was. They were stopped. They, at the post they tried to, they tried to implement it, All but right. didn't work. So after that, they just gave up on it because well, obviously the Germans know that we're trying to hide bombs and rats, and not to throw rats into furnaces around or anything like that. So what's the <clears> official <throat> true or false line? Did they come up with a plan uh, to put bombs in rats to <laughs> blow up factories? Did they come up with a plan? Or sorry, did did they? <laughs> they try putting explosives. Did in they? Rats. Did, did they did, actually post rats, but they were caught? Did they try to use rats with bombs in them to blow up factories? That's a terrible thing. <sighs> See, this one seems kind of silly. Very vague. It's it's silly. It. It's like did they? So it's not did mm, they think about it. It's like did they try to do it? Did they try to do it? As I said, they had a hundred of them and they got caught. Yes. And it was the British that came up with this idea. Oh, yeah. See, that makes me think it might be possible. SOE. <laughs> Special Operations Executive. Because the Americans would never do something that silly. I'm going to say false. Well, they had bat bombs. That's, yeah. That's true, actually. Oh, goodness. I'm going to... Uh, this, is, this is one of those things where I don't believe it, but I've heard so much so much stuff on this show already. The British done done where? Like where was this done? Was this done in Britain or was this done? It was a German factory, so German, well, no, no. in Germany? No. The SOE, the SOE got the rats, put bombs in them, attempted to deliver them to, to where? resistance fighters anywhere across Europe. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere just anywhere like, across Europe, you know, occup- German occupied Europe. Right. That's not that wild of a thing or I don't know, local agents. Um, so they're spread out then, like kind of. Well, I don't. Know. I, I don't actually know what country they got sent to initially. If it had worked, I'm sure they would have dropped far more of them. So I just imagine. I don't know how they were delivered, but I imagine. <laughs> they were literally just dropped like a midnight parachute drop, and they're like a forest somewhere, maybe in France. <laughs> it's picturing dead mice in a parachute. They, there happened to be some a German patrol nearby, and they picked it up first rather than whoever it was supposed to go to. That rat looks explosive. <laughs> Pick it up. <laughs> well, no, they probably opened the box and thought, why did they drop a big box of rats? <laughs> yeah, that would probably be my, my first reaction as well. He's massive, dead rats. Massive, ra- a massive box with a parachute on it with dead rats in it. Well, I'm you know if it's being dropped from a plane, a military plane, in the middle of a field during war, and you know there's resistance fighters out there, you know you you, you know that box is meant for something. Yeah. Uh, I'm. What's the true or false line again? Did they try to? Did they put explosives into rats and try to use them to blow a factory? Yes, I think they did. Go on, I'll say true. The SOE, Special Operations Executive. False. That's that's the tipping point for Mister Mister Black. It's the SOE. No, it's not. It's just the fact that it's like where they deliver to, just all over the place, just you know, generally. Well, go on, go on, Mister Red. All right, so you're going with the details are just very vague. You're going with false, Mister so, yeah, Black, yeah, and you're going I'll true. I'll go with Mr. true. Right. Well, it's true. Um, I don't, I don't understand. It's like German occupied Europe. There's going to be factories across Europe that you want to sabotage because it's going towards the German war effort. Um, I don't know where they were dropped. I just know they were captured by the Germans. I'm sure if I had I actually went and got a, a book on the SOE or something, there's, that's probably in there and they'll give you a bit more detail, but I couldn't find that. Do you have like a source or something for this story? Well, there's a Guardian article. There's a Daily Mail article. There's a National Archives article. Military History Express. It was a BBC. Jesus. They stuck it right up his ass. Stick the bomb <laughs> just right up there. Uh, it wouldn't be a good, it wouldn't be a show of uh, some dude shared without something being shoved up there. There you go. There's a little there's a little model wrap. Lovely. Second World War's turning into one of those things that no matter what story I hear, I'm probably gonna think it's true. So sorry, they didn't even cut the rat open, they just shoved it up its arse. Lovely. Why bother wasting time? Just shove it up there. It's a hole. It's it's, it's a ready-made hole. Exactly. So lovely, Mister wow. Mister Black. This seems so. seems like he's lost the will to live. So <laughs> I just wish there was more to it. You know what I mean? So uh, moving. It's, it's, on. it's very vague on the details, isn't it? But uh, it is. the, the details on it are very vague. Yeah. Again, if I probably got a book on the SOE, it would probably be in there. I just uh, read there that even the supplier of the rats in London didn't even know what they're being used for. <laughs> yeah, I want to order a bunch of dead rats, please. Or maybe they were alive. I don't know. Well, I just need rats that are alive. Don't need to tell your supplier what you're doing with it. Um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you need them for? 
can't talk about it. So moving on from shoving bombs up rats' asses to uh, water sports. So, <laughs> well, let me explain. So um, th- this, this story goes back to uh, 1999. And it's in... Uh, uh, yes, just before the millennial blog. <laughs> yep, in, uh, in Nova Scotia in Canada. Mm-hmm. So, um, basically, they, they, Nova Scotia is quite, quite, quite a nice place, a lot of nice farmland around there and everything. And a lot of people like to... One of the things they like to do is they like to grow very large vegetables. Right. Right. Um, and in particular, uh, pumpkins. Really big pumpkins is quite a thing over there. So, uh, one guy called uh, Daniel Dill. It's uh, a great name for a farmer. He um, he thought it would he thought it would be a good idea, right? If he got his pumpkin and he hollowed it out and he used it as a boat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so right. um, uh, how big was this pumpkin? It's really quite large. I mean, we're, we're, I mean, it's big enough to be a boat. So it's, I, I want to say that big, but that's not very good for the uh, for would, a podcast. Would it be fur? Would it be fur? If I was to Google world's largest pumpkin, if you would Google uh, world's largest pumpkin, you'd probably find a very big pumpkin. I, I don't. It's as big as a. I'd say, if you were to, you could, from one of the looks of things, there's a picture here of a guy, uh, of of it happening, and he's kind of sat in the pumpkin. And he's got his elbows resting on the side of it, so I'm guessing he's like cross-legged I, in there. I have seen pumpkins where they were like like a guy standing next to it. You know what I mean? That was nearly the full height of the guy. Okay, right. Yes. Pumpkins can be gigantic. That, yeah. That's some big ass so, pumpkins right there. I, I yeah, right. So yeah, Daniel Dill. He, uh, he basically. Can it, I mean, can it grow naturally like that, or do they inject them with really weird things? They get a steroid. <laughs> pumpkin. I think it's much like strongman competitions. That sort of thing is hush hush. Okay. Um, so. That's like everyone knows it's going on, but let's just not talk about it. Miracle grow. But yeah, anyway, uh, so they got the, he has this massive, massive pumpkin. Turns right. out it. Fl- I just want to, so after looking at the giant pumpkins, I just want to say true. I was going to say true anyway. I already yeah. made my mind up. Oh. Yeah, just giant pumpkins. That's. I didn't real, realize you could get them quite as big as that. And, you know, pumpkins are pretty sturdy, sturdy outer, outer skin. I'm just going to go with uh, true. Yeah, All because right. surely center of gravity, like, they would have. I doubt. I doubt this is the first guy that's made well, a pumpkin. Hold on, just pumpkin. a moment. He didn't just get in the get in the pumpkin and float a bit. Oh, okay, he, um, <laughs> no. This uh, he, he it worked so well that he decided to make a big event out of it. And um, in the town of uh, Windsor, uh, which is near La- uh, Lake, um, forgive my so pronunciation. This is in, this Lake, is in Nova Lake Scotia. Yeah, this is Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Is it? You know, it's a bit. Of, it could be. Was it a bit born there? I would imagine so. Yeah, I can't right, imagine so Nova Scotia. Have a big event about a pumpkin. Yeah, I yeah. Believe it. I believe <laughs> <it>. <laughs> big event about a pumpkin. Yes. So um, it, it turned. Uh, it wasn't just an event for him. It was. He turned it into a big race. So there's the uh, <laughs> there's the Windsor Pumpkin Regatta, which has been held in in the town of Windsor in Nova Scotia on Lake Passaquid, um, for a, for a good few years now since 1999. Oh, this is a common. It's a boat. It's a boat race. With pumpkins, oh, so um, that must be a really surreal thing to watch. There are now there are more details about these these races. Uh, there are three classes um, <laughs> to go in. Uh, they're all pumpkins, small, medium, big. No, no, it's uh, three classes are um, are paddling. So like with a canoe row thing. Oh my god, there's gonna be a motor uh, pumpkin. There's, yeah, you're not there's, gonna say. there's gonna be a motor pumpkin. There's a there's a motor class. Fuck me. So you put an outboard motor on your pumpkin. Um and then there's <laughs> the picture of the says <laughs> And then there's not much detail there's not much detail on this one, but the last class is experimental. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? <laughs> Helicopter pumpkin. So I just get I guess they just like lasso a dolphin or something and use it like a chariot. Um, <laughs> Which is which is a wonderful idea, Canada. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite notable and it's got quite a following. There were uh, in two thousand and eight there were sixty entries for the regatta or for the big boat race event. Wow! Uh, with ten thousand spectators. Oh, wait, I wonder if anyone's I... ever made a submarine with a pumpkin. Got oh, probably not. They they float really well. <laughs> A really good way to smuggle things, giant pumpkins. Like, are the police really gonna check the entire pumpkin? Well, I'm pretty sure they'd be curious by the giant pumpkin. They'd be like, fuck me, look at the size of that thing. 
Let's have a look at it. Yeah, but it's, it just seems like a good way to hide it in plain sight. You know, you know, if you're like, this is a competition entry. Mm. Stay back from the pumpkin, and like, oh, sir, that's that's a, such an impressive pumpkin. Yes, we, I, what comp? Where's the competition? And it's like it's here, and I'm like, oh, that's that's good, that's good. Very very nice pumpkin, sir. Thank you. Continue on with your day. Well, we do know how extensive security is. They may have uh, pit inspections and pumpkin inspections. Yeah, you know what I mean, so, I, I, I'm just gonna say true. The the race is a, is an eight is eight hundred meters from start to finish. True. And everybody paints up their pumpkins so with all like racing colors and everything like. True. Uh, you're just saying true. It's, a, it's, it's like the Red Bull soapbox race, except yeah, just pumpkins. Grow your, grow your vehicle. Grow your own vehicle. I picture in Nova Scotia that's really boring, so might as well. I mean, you've people have like chasing a wheel down a hill. Oh, that's uh, that's that crazy world of England, though. Is that is it England? Yeah, that that's happens? that's the cheese, the cheese rolling. That's England. Hmm. So um, well, you know what? I'm and say. then there's competitions in France about how often you can cheat on your wife. You know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't think that's. A, I don't think that's a thing. But you know, it wouldn't surprise me. It's the French. <sighs> true. Yeah, I'm gonna say true. True. All right. Well, guys, I can tell you, you're both right. It is true. <laughs> it is true. There is an annual, an annual pumpkin regatta uh, in the town of Windsor in Nova Scotia. Are the YouTube videos in this? Uh, yes. I will need to look this up later. We'll have to. We'll, we'll have to look that up later. Surely, there's some comical ones where the the pumpkin eye breaks apart or you know spills over. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so if anybody out there has um, has been afloat in a vegetable, please uh, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, I'm just, I'm just waiting for somebody to turn a like oversized cucumber into a canoe or something. Well, could, I, w- I don't know. Could you make a good? No, no, a cucumber couldn't be big enough. Well, I, don't, well, you, I didn't think can, a fucking pumpkin could be big enough. But well, I mean, if you can grow them big enough, like the way a pump, like you know, you have a normal sized pumpkin, but. If you can grow them to that size, surely you can grow any vegetable to that size. Oh, so think, okay, so size not being a limit, what vegetable would you pick? For what? For a boat. For probably a banana. Yeah, but a pumpkin has a nice natural ridge formation. To it, but a know? banana looks like a boat. Nice you know smooth I mean? skin. Mm. Now, the problem with a banana is... And it's waxy skin, so yeah, it's not going to leak. It's not, yeah, it's but not whenever solid, you, though. It's yeah, soft. whenever you hollow out the banana, you know, it's just it's going to be soggy skin. I, I was thinking like a pepper. A pepper would be pretty good because they're pretty hollow already. If you had a giant gigantic pepper, a bit spicy to sit on, like I'm not a chili pepper, I'm like a bell pepper. Yeah, bell pepper. That would be pretty. That'd be like a a C T cup. Yeah, but you cut it sideways, so I think that'd be more. Yeah, but like. you're gonna get a lot of resistance. You're either gonna get a lot of you know the way a bell pepper shaped like a bell. Say you use the top at the front, you're gonna get a lot of resistance, and say you use the top at the back, you're gonna get a lot of drag. So what you need is something long and skinny. So well, like a banana, if it but, was if it was solid. Yes, with a cucumber. So a cucumber might be best. You ever see those things that the Navy SEALs use, like the underwater sort of look like bikes? Yeah. You know, I mean, you just sort of make like a cucumber into one of those, and you just you know you just speed through like a submarine. Brilliant. That'd be pretty awesome. Just well, you, you can either do it on the surface, or else if you're have, have your diving gear on, you got your oxygen tank, you just go go underneath. There you go. Stealth. Sweet. Seal team, whatever, on their uh, underwater cucumber. Cumber team. Yeah. We call those underwater thing, underwater, underwater things. Submersible vehicle or something. I don't, know. I don't know. I think I know what you're talking oh, about. SMV, I think. Or S. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I just yeah. have no idea what it's called. Oh, no. It's enough fantasizing about vegetables. Mr. Black, what's your, uh, what's your story for us today? Well, from healthy to unhealthy. Here we go. Is it a boat race in a big bucket of fried chicken? Hold on to your butts. Well, it's actually not that exciting. Oh. $50 million worth of market research was spent in a team effort between Burger King and KFC in order to surpass McDonald's. They teamed up? Yeah. Against McDonald's? Yep. It's a worthy cause. Yep, because, you know, they're just sick of their, you know, the fact that they're just the leaders. And you'll find a way. When was this? This was in... If you say the 80s, I would believe it. No, no, 2003. Yeah. Oh. Um, so Burger King worldwide, each chain, right? Burger King has 18,625 chains. Is or, that all? You know, yeah. Well, worldwide? Yeah. KFC has 25,000. Is that all? Yeah. And McDonald's has a mammoth 39,198. Still, so, is that all? I can't tell if you're joking or not. <laughs> no, I just thought, I genuinely thought it was more than that. Hmm. No, Considering in New York, like on Manhattan Island, there's fucking like what two hundred of them. That's probably like where most of them are. Like it's literally probably like the most densely to, packed in. Literally, you could go from one block to another, and there's just a McDonald's there. I don't know how you could starve to death in New York. 
couldn't afford it. <laughs> I'm starving, sir. Have you got a dollar? Spend no. all your money in Tiffany's. Um, so that's just to give you a rough number. So, and that's of now. So I think it's like 2020. Um, or roughly those numbers of chains. So the story goes, Burger King and KFC are feeling sidelined by the sheer scale of McDonald's. They joined forces and spent collaboratively $50 million on the 14th of February, uh, 2003, to, to contract a private research firm called Accenture to research the reasons for McDonald's success with meetings involving BK and KFC executives on a regular basis for management consulting. So basically like, you know, how can we improve our brand? Like there's, I didn't even know this, that there's actually companies out there that, you know, you literally hire them just to do research and stuff for you and the you know consultation firms mm. but like even yeah like even just advertising i didn't even know that i thought all the advertising stuff was just done in-house but like a lot of these guys just employ people to like yeah help us do our advertising so what did they come up with well let's start with kfc uh a roast chicken product line was introduced in 2004 it proved unsuccessful and uh the worldwide avian flu scare of 2005 temporarily decreased sales by as much as 40 percent yeah KFC responded March 2005 by adding a cheap, small chicken burger to the menu called The Snacker. It proved to be one of the most successful product launches to date, with over $100 million in sales. In international markets, KFC introduced The Boxmaster, a meal-sized wrap in a box. KFC also began a makeover of the U.S. brand image, bringing back the full Kentucky Fried Chicken name at some outlets and returning portraits of the colonel to prominence. Because for a while, the colonel was just really on, like, I can't, I, this is going back, I can't really. That's actually you. a fair point, because the colonel is now on the signs yeah. here, but yeah. it didn't used to be like that. No. I only ever remember seeing the colonel, like, on, on the, the side main the side. Chicken. No, just, just like, on the restaurant itself. I never, actually, you never actually saw his name on the box, or his face on the box or anything. I thought he was on the side of the chicken tub. Mm, I don't, I don't remember, well, say, I, my memory's foggy, I don't remember. I remember the cups, though, was only, like, KFC. Yeah. And like the old writing, it was just KFC. You didn't see the colonel's face on it or anything. But now you just see the colonel everywhere, you know? Hmm. So, mm. like, I think there seems to be a trend with mascots making a return, which brings us to Burger King. Oh, what do they do? Uh, uh, they were a bit more exciting in their uh, business ventures. Uh, in 2003, they introduced the Burger King as we know him today. You know, the guy with the massive oversized head? Oh, the... the- the creepy the creepy king the creepy king yeah um a lot of old uh, sort of burger king adverts actually sparked like some of the first memes online it right. just show it would take away have it your way and replace it with uh who is your or where is your god now um, <laughs> the pictures of him in 2003 they introduced the burger king as we know him today most famously known as the sneak king from successful advertising overhaul along with promotional adverty games or ad, advert games. That's right. Just, there was an Xbox 360 game. There were three. Three. There were three, yes. Published by King Games, but they were developed by Blitz Games, from what I know. There was an Xbox 360 game of the Burger King. Yes, there were three of them. Um, what? One, one was called Pocket Bike Racer. Pocket, like, pocket bikes are like the little miniature, like the mini motos you can get. Uh, Sneak King, which is probably the most famous one. And the third one was called Big Bumpin'. What's that? It's like a car combat game, which was like based on bumper cars. All right. It's a big bumping. This is um, since we're talking about Burger King, I've seen this meme recently. Um, well, it's when I say meme, it, it's literally a Burger King poster. So this is literally put up in the restaurants. It was work for the king, not a clown. Which is a job at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that as well. That is a trend that uh, we will also get into. So. <clears throat> yeah, so Pocket Bike Racer, Sneak King, and Big Bumpin' were all created in just seven months and were considered to be of such high quality that they were pulled from Xbox Live Arcade to be sold as a box product directly in Burger King stores in North America. And you can get the games for an additional $4 on top of every meal. But I remember listening to another podcast one time where uh, it was Jan Bomb, actually, and one of the guys was sort of reminiscing about the story where he didn't even get the food. He just rolled up to a Burger King drive through and he just for the novelty of just being handed games through a Burger King drive through window. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like just, just purely for the novelty of it. I just paid for the games. Didn't even want the food. Just, I'll buy the games. <laughs> there you go. Now, 
there's a clever subliminal slash psychological reasoning for them choosing the king as their mascot. Well, because McDonald's was a clown, you know, like a jester. Yeah. Um, you know, generally the king is, you know, the jester just is at the behest of the king. You know, the, the king rules over the jester, which they made use of during special or promotional annual events as well, where people would visit Burger King, but they would be dressed as Ronald McDonald. But the trolling, trolling didn't stop there. In 2017, they ramped up their trolling efforts against McDonald's by releasing a series of ads targeting their rival. This also happened in the 80s between like all the burger chains, mainly in America. It was called the Burger Wars. Right. Yeah. It's actually, actually a real thing. I remember we watched the documentary about them. Yep, the Burger Wars. Um, just like companies just taking jabs. And you've probably seen things on Twitter as well, like Wendy's having to go with you know, Arby's or whatever. One of the ads Burger King released... Uh, named The Gift of Fire was a Christmas ad where the king himself rolls up to a McDonald's establishment with a large flatbed BK themed truck carrying a large present which opened up showing a large flaming grill complete with pyrotechnics with a slogan now you can flame grill too happy holidays and this is actually in the advert like they actually rolled up to a McDonald's and you saw like all the workers and their faces were blurred out and stuff followed by a bunch of BK carolers singing Gift of Fire Gift of Fire flame grilled all the way so it's like Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. But jingle Bells, but frame, Flame Grilled. Flame Grilled all the way, yeah. Um, another <laughs> ad campaign involved the movie It, whereas as soon as the movie ended, like, so it was just black screen, and then before the credits rolled up, um, they flashed two large spotlights on the screen. The first one said, the moral is, never trust a clown. <laughs> and then, boom, the second spotlight would come on and just be the Burger King logo. This was done in Germany. But there's a video on YouTube, again, showing it. Amazing. Um, but sometimes BK take their trolling a little bit too far, as they came under fire in March 2021 when they tweeted, women belong in the kitchen. It's controversial. <laughs> this is a thread of tweet which went on to explain that only 20% of their chefs, chefs were women, and they wanted to hire more women chefs to even the ratio, but people jumped on the outrage bandwagon straight away because well, they obviously hate women. Because it's Twitter. Yeah, well, they obviously hate women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, there we go. True or false? Uh, what is the statement we're saying? I true guess, or false? I guess uh, KFC McDonald's and, and KFC... Burger. No, sorry. KFC and Burger King. Burger King, King KFC spent $50 million cooperatively to try and take down McDonald's. In 2003? In 2003, yes. Well, I know the Burger King did all those things. Like, it's Burger King has been having jobs at McDonald's for years. Mm. I uh, think they're bringing back the Burger Wars in a way. But then I don't know whether it's just because they're, they have like the la- least amount of chains out of those three, the big three. The thing is, it's all all the stuff you were describing has happened. Yeah. But did it's they the, work together with KFC? Yeah. That's they, what we're that's what we're trying they, to analyze here. Well, did they spend fifty million dollars to work together? Yeah. On consult with a consultancy firm. That's the true or false question, isn't it? Mm. Because all the advertising overhaul came. But. What I don't understand is why work together if they're just going to a third party. What do you mean? They, they don't need to work together. Well, they don't need to, sure. But I think the thinking was they just put their money together and just go for one mad. Because the ultimate goal was to try and sideline McDonald's. Because, mm. like, I mean, go by those numbers. It wasn't double, but it was nearly double. Well, would it be fair to say that... In fact, is that more? Mm. McDonald's it was 39,000, I said, wasn't it? So yeah, 39,000. I mean, quick math here. What was the number again? Thirty nine thousand. Thirty nine thousand for McDonald's. I'm just I'm just rounding it up. Uh, say nineteen thousand for Burger King. Mm-hmm. Twenty five thousand for KFC. So okay. is that, does that mean McDonald's still has more than both of them? No, they didn't. No, just under. Just under. So it's thirty nine thousand, twenty five thousand, and eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. No, it would be it would be like four thousand short. Four thousand. Yeah. Oh yeah, for quick math. So. I'm surprised more people weren't involved, isn't it? To be honest, I just yeah. picture like that table in uh, The Simpsons, where like all the restaurant people are just gathering together. Right? How can we destroy? I imagine it's kind of like not not that I, not that I want to implicate anybody here, but you know the way Britain and the Soviet Union kind of came together. They didn't like each other, but they came together to fight a greater evil. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> kind of what I'm thinking here. Is like the Mr. The Burger King and Colonel Sanders just... The enemy of my enemy. Just, yeah. We don't like each other, but... but 
Well, so there's bigger fish to fry right now. The thing is, but like, then you also uh, don't know. All, all I know is that I don't know really know the inner workings as to whether maybe maybe KFC, like a Game of Thrones kind of thing, <laughs> like KFC and Burger King were sort of behind the scenes, behind their own closed doors, going right. We're also going to use this to find out what their all that what KFC plan to do or what Burger King plan to do, and we're going to screw them over. You know, like so. Maybe they're both thinking the same thing. Oh, this will give us a look into what maybe they're planning to do down the road. It does seem a bit the working strange. together part. I don't know. Like I can understand why you would do it, but I, for other things. But in terms of a, a fast food war, like Burger King's been doing it, has been jabbing at McDonald's for years. Mm, I I can imagine it. I Have they ever jabbed KFC? Not that I can actually think of. No. Has KFC ever jabbed anybody? I don't think so. Sure, well, well KFC, like even they KFC, seem very plain. Like uh, Burger King wouldn't even the KFC wouldn't be. Other than it's a, a fast food competitor, but it's not a burger competitor. If you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, McDonald's is the burger competitor. Yeah. This is all fast food, right? The KFC. Well, it's all fast food, but it, you know, it, then you're bringing down into the, your main products, the meat burger. Mm. And, what they both took on board was well, KFC has always had a mascot, and Burger King was always around. Like Burger King was introduced back in nineteen sixty seven, if I remember right. But he was just literally like a two D, just like a like a king, just sitting there. Like he wasn't the the sneak king, you know, reinvented yeah. in two thousand three. But they both seem to come away with the fact that okay, we need like a remember like a memorable mascotty thing. So you know that's why they brought the colonel back properly, and then they they yeah. full on brought back well, the see, king. The thing is, I think. Like we have watched the fast the Burger War documentary, we I remember us watching them. I think you've just taken all these events that have happened and just tacked on to KFC and Burger King work together to do this. Maybe you're right. I'm tempted to say true. And I think such a massive rebrandization might even cost more than fifty million. I don't know. Well, that's the branding. It's not the. It's just a consultancy cost. So. No. Oh, was that just the consultancy cost? Mm. Is that just a consultancy cost? I'm actually not sure. I assumed it was. Well, yeah, it would be a consultancy cost. Well, it's just it's just the consultancy cost. You no, know, yeah, because I'm just trying to imagine how it would work. So, you'd pay them. I'm assuming. Well, you'd pay them to generate the ideas and look at the data, and then you would just take implement their ideas. But you'd have to pay. Yeah. That separately yourself. Yeah, right, because they surely published and made the games and stuff. Yeah. Well. And that was a few years. That was a good few years later as well, after the king yeah, made so, prominence. So, so they pay fifty million for the consultancy firm. Yeah. Plus, okay. Um. Right. Well, that's a believable figure. Um. Did they work together? I can see why they work together, but at the same point, I don't know why they would, especially considering Burger King's been fighting the good fight a long time. Well, see, they didn't. I don't think they actually worked together, but they both cooperatively co- spent. They, co- they they put halfers in each to go to the consultancy firm. Yeah. But then, if they're doing that, they might as well coordinate what they're doing. Unless you know, you could actually you could split up on the different countries, right? You spend this much here, or you you attack their market share here, and we'll attack it here, getting attacked on multiple fronts. So you don't really know how these companies are run either. Like, I mean, it seems Burger King took the advice more to heart. Like they did bring in a proper mascot. It's actually. I just think made... maybe the consultancy <laughs> firm were just looking at McDonald's and going, "Okay, what do they have? They have Ronald McDonald. Like everyone knows who Ronald McDonald is, but." Burger King doesn't have a mascot, KFC, right, the colonel, so just put his picture on everything more. But Burger King were just like, you know what, we're having a bloody mascot, we're going to have a really good one. So they just full on went the full steam ahead. But I'm really sure they came up with the Burger King themselves. Well, there was the Burger King in 1967, but he wasn't like, he wasn't like the reinvented Burger King. Oh yes, it was the reinvented Burger King. He wasn't like the big head creepy king that we all love today. Um... (laughs) I never had the fortune of playing those uh, 360 games. Oh, sadly not. I think they're more <laughs> more of an American thing. And I, I, I remember actually people were actually giving off about the king as well, like the sneak king, because the adverts just showed him sneaking up on people and like he would appear in some guy's bed with a burger as well. <laughs> like just really, really creepy. Give kids nightmares. I don't know. I think you've taken a series of facts. and Well, there's just examples of just how tacked they, uh, up, Just tacked on that they worked together to do it. Or put their money together to do it. I'm gonna st- I'm gonna stay say true. I think it's I think it's, it sounds about right to me. Well, Mr. Black, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna say false. I think you just I think you've just taken serious facts and then just tacked on at the end. They work together. Why well, put that at the start? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think I'd... you don't think it's a coincidence after 2003 this the the revolution started happening. I don't know. Maybe they thought they'd update their brands. 
Well, KFC, I think, just buggered it up. Like, let's introduce a whole chicken. Nah, didn't work. All right. Mr. Black, do tell. Yeah, I made it up. You made it up? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Oh dear. I can imagine it I can imagine it actually happening, you know, because companies do every now and then work together. Car companies did it all the time. Yeah, car companies do it all the time. Now what I will say is the firms Burger King did invest money into a firm, like a consultancy firm, but it was just on their own. It was Yeah. So that's why I didn't I, they couldn't I just imagine just working just, together on the, on this capacity. I I just I don't understand why the the beat market share maybe, but well obviously, but that's, that doesn't make sense for me to do it. It's not like two companies come together to make a car, you know. Mm. I can maybe see it happening in more desperate situations, like branches were closing left, right, and center, and they were just you know it's like Mordor taking over Middle Earth and Rohan Gondor and to get together. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. There you go. Well, actually, in that in that case uh, I think the weaker of the pair would just end up buying the other and then there was actually they even owned by the same people wouldn't surprise me the worst I'm trying to think um, I don't think they would be surely not I don't know no 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 they're not I remember the company that owned Burger King were also in lots of other random stuff too but I can't remember what they were but I just remember thinking that's random <laughs> it tells you a lot of information like there's there's Wikipedia articles on KFC and Burger King, but there's also separate Wikipedia articles called History of KFC, History of Burger King. And if you look at the history of Burger King, there's like lots of really like weird stuff that the, more about the parent companies and past CEOs and stuff. But it's like the parent company, they shifted hands quite a bit over the years. Um, but like some of the parent companies like just had their fingers in many pies. Mm. Like it was something just really random, like cars and stuff as well. Like. It wasn't cars, but it was just, it was something just really completely unrelated. That I just thought was really strange. Big investment companies, they got money everywhere. They just yeah, they don't really have a, a certain thing that they go for. Like Burger King and then missiles. Where you know what I mean? Just like it was something really like just offshoot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so there we go. So they didn't. So KFC and Burger King did not work together. I feel you someday, Mister Red. I fucking will. <laughs> One day. One day. Have you ever fooled you? Ever? Oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. think you did. I remember the Pringles. Oh, yeah, yeah it's the Pringles. That was, I think that's my best one still. <sighs> so simple. Well, um, I think on that note, I think we will say, uh, we'll call an end to it and uh, give Mr. Black some more time to come up with a, uh, a snack-related story for next, uh, for next week. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Until next time. And on that note, goodbye. Cheerio.